Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be solving a real problem. Well, a complex problem with a real part. So we have real part of Z equals Z divided by one plus I. Well, what is Z? Z is a complex number. If you are new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like number theory, algebra, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, my very first channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. And let me know what you think about this problem and the overall channel. So complex numbers, in a nutshell, are numbers that can be written in two dimensions. So a number, complex number, can be written as Z equals A plus BI or X plus YI, any letter you use. But A plus BI is very important because, do you know why? Because it's the name of this channel. So you got to remember that all the time, okay? Hopefully that'll help you if you forget. So with these kinds of problems, obviously A is the real part of Z and B is called the imaginary part of Z. And notice that imaginary part does not contain I because both the real part and the imaginary part are real numbers. Can you believe that? Okay. So that's how we define complex numbers and that we can definitely plot them in the coordinate system, right? Just like a point, or a, you can think of it as a vector two, like a comma b, and then of course it's gonna have a distance from zero, which we define as the modulus, or we could call it the absolute value of z. You can write it like this, or you can replace absolute value of z with r. R is denoted, just used to denote absolute value or modulus. And it's important because the reason why we call that r is because if you kind of write an equation like absolute value of z equals 3, that means r equals 3. So you're basically talking about a circle whose radius is 3. Doesn't that make sense? What about the center? It's at 0, 0, of course. And if you want the center to be somewhere else, you can modify it. So those are locus problems. I've done quite a few of those. Go ahead and check them out if you have done so already. But a problem like this can be solved by substitution. But I'm going to ask you for alternative because I'm always for alternative solution methods. It kind of makes you think in different ways that you have or you've never thought before. Okay? So that's important to kind of look for alternatives, different approaches. Okay, great. So how do we solve a problem like this? Let's go ahead and rewrite the problem. Rewriting the problem or even writing a problem many times will actually help you brainstorm ideas. It's kind of like a simple act, but it's definitely going to help you. So we kind of have a complex number such that when we divide it by 1 plus i, we get the real part. You know what that's supposed to mean? It just means that z divided by 1 plus i is real. Can you believe that? Great. So you can go ahead and call that k. k is real, by the way. You could also call this something else, but I wanted to use k because I want to talk about something. And then when you do the cross multiplication, you basically get something like z equals k times 1 plus i. You know what that means? It means if you're looking for z, it's actually going to be a real multiple of 1 plus i. What do I mean by that? So I'm saying that it could be 3 times 1 plus i or 2 times 1 plus i, or maybe even negative square root of 2 times 1 plus i. I'm not saying these are solutions. I'm just saying these are possibilities. Of course, we're going to have to test them, right? But how do you know which k value is going to work? That is a million dollar question. And we can just kind of get the taste, to get the taste of it, we can take one of these and test them, right? For example, if z is given by this, then the real part of z it's just going to be, you know, z divided by, so what am I trying to do here? Okay, so is this number going to satisfy this equation? That's my question, right? Let's forget about all the other numbers. Well, this is 3 plus 3i. Three so what is the real part of z? It is 3, right? The imaginary part of z is also 3, but we don't really care about it because that's not in our equation. Okay, great. So we're going to plug it in on the left-hand side, so we should be getting a 3 on the left-hand side. What about the right-hand side? Let's go ahead and check it out. Well, z is 3 plus 3i three divided by 1 plus i. As you know, this is just, maybe I should just write 3 times 1 plus i, so cancellation is immediate. And here we go. Uh-oh, they seem to be equal. Is that a coincidence? 
What if I try another number? Z equals 2 times 1 plus i. Okay? This is going to be 2 plus 2i. The real part of z is just going to be a 2. And z divided by 1 plus i is just going to be 2. Uh-oh. This seems to be working again. What does that mean? Well, you can try a thousand numbers, and even if they all work, you can safely say that, oh, okay, these are all the solutions, or this is what the solutions look like, right? That's not a proof by any means. You kind of need to prove it in the general sense. That's why it's important to adopt a general approach, okay? To use a more generic method. So that was kind of like our first attempt. Let's just call that, and this is gonna be our second approach. Ready? Okay. So we're basically looking for the solution of this equation. And then if we assume Z can be written as A plus BI, again, you can use X plus YI, something else, doesn't matter, no big deal. But if we assume that Z can be written this way, then from here, real part of Z becomes A. Awesome. <laughs> now, what does that mean? It means that I can just plug it in. So replace re real part of z with a, z is a plus bi, it's divided by 1 plus i. Uh-oh, this is kind of interesting. Let's find out what this looks like. So we're going to solve this equation by cross multiplication. We multiply a times 1 plus i. Let's go ahead and write it that way first, if you want. And then we're going to go ahead and distribute a plus ai equals a plus bi. That's kind of weird, isn't it? What does that mean? It means that the real parts have to be equal, but we already know A equals A, right? Obviously, reflexive property. What about this? The imaginary parts also have to be equal. Oh, by, by the way, I forgot to say this appears in lecture notes, but if two complex numbers are equal, their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal, okay? That's easy to prove, by the way. But from here, we get B equals A. Wait a minute, what is that supposed to mean? A equals A, we understand it, but what about B equals A? Well, it means that the imaginary part of our number Z is the same as the real part of our number Z. In other words, the real part and the imaginary part of this complex number are the same. So we kind of have, instead of A plus BI, we kind of have A plus AI. Hmm, that's interesting. By the way, AI is not artificial intelligence. It's just the imaginary part multiplied by I. Okay, so what does that mean? So any number in this form is going to work. Is that the case? And when we test it out, some numbers like k times 1 plus i, they worked. Uh-oh. Yes, absolutely, we can do this because we can factor out an a. Hey, I just realized that. a times 1 plus i and k and a in this case do the same thing. But basically, any multiple of 1 plus i is going to work and what about zero? I, I didn't really try or tested it out. If z is zero, its real part is going to be zero. And yes, including zero, yay, all numbers, as long as a is real, this is going to give you all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI and... Bye-bye.